Hello and welcome back to the uh, presentation for weekly sentiment analysis of the Euro. I'm just back here in Los Angeles, sunny Los Angeles right now with a cup of joe and I jammed through the two o'clock session. I want to be able to do a recap of what it is um, that we were emailing about and uh, just talk about basically some of the research highlights and uh, why this is relevant and, and information that is useful. With the first slide, I pretty much tested the data based on the underlying factor of the S factor raw score, the five day moving average of the raw score from social market analytics and predicting the daily returns of the euro. So the proxy for the sentiment or proxy, the, the, the five day raw score was my proxy for the sentiment factor and its ability to predict the euro. The proxy for the euro in this case is the underlying euro ETF. Here are the results. These are all the observations from May 2014 up until May 2016 of this year. And as you can see, there's a moderately positive slope. Uh, the next point uh, to, to take a look at for the major bullets is that the news versus sentiment, uh, the news producing permanent returns, whereas sentiment just produces temporary returns. So it's somewhat intuitive. Uh, research does support that intuition as well. And the sentiment indicators, um, as pretty much what we'll focus on with this research, is uh, temporary in nature, creating temporary returns since it affects prices and not the economy. So that's something to understand. There's, some, there's, a, there's quite a bit of uh, fine lines here that we need to understand it once we're talking about the, uh, once we talk about this, the stock prediction model, the stock prediction model really takes a look at the collection of individual stocks rather than the economy as a whole. And my research, for the most part, um, with the option sentiment indicator, the OSI, is taking market sentiment as a proxy for sentiment. And when we say sentiment, we're talking, we're talking pretty much top line sentiment. And when I say top line sentiment, I mean the collective sentiment of the markets which is somewhat different than, well, is a lot different than investor confidence or consumer confidence. And we'll get into that later, but just, just to, really, to, to really point out, the option sentiment indicator is simply a noise trading indicator. And uh, it's a, it, it does capture intraday, intraday price movements and this noise uh, really should just be traded off. It should not be seen as permanent stock price returns and every day is a new day. And so the question of the paper is, can social media and sentiment data be included in a stock prediction model? So that's something to understand uh, because we're saying, because this, this adds a whole new element to what is fundamental in, in, in the uh, stock prediction models, which, classifies stocks as you know large cap and small cap value and growth stocks and um, but there's also there's also sentiment tied to the to the individual stock so that's something that that uh, that is pretty much courtesy of different data vendors such as social market analytics that uh, that this question comes into play um, and so the, the results are intriguing and they're, you know, they're very exciting. Um, so with no further ado, I'll just go ahead and go into that. The, the caveats, I, I'll, just, I'll just go ahead and, 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 and skip this. So to answer the main question, according to Lou and company and their research says, yes, we can include social media and sentiment um, as a factor in the stock a stock prediction model. So it's just something that we can we can kind of understand as a factor. So it, it does it does uh, incorporate itself in a in a factor model, which it obviously uh, means that there's a pricing factor to it, and there is a uh, predictability to it. So it does become a factor that is that has been tested and and conclusively says yes. Yeah, they say that it, it can be, it can predict uh, stock prices. 
According to dissertation from Coleman's research, he says no uh, because he takes a look at sentiment. Uh, he takes a look at investor sentiment and investor confidence as a proxy for sentiment. And so according to the to, to rational utility theory, the, the size of your purse strings won't necessarily mean that you're going to um, continue uh, a self-reinforcing momentum or you're not going to you're not going to continue a uh, self-reinforcing mechanism that is going to is going to say rationally that that, that that's that's not supported by research. So the investor, does not uh, subscribe to the notion of uh, social sentiment as a price continuance as a, in the long run. And so therefore, um, that's probably a good explanation as to why the investor confidence survey is a contrarian indicator. So we'll get into that with the, with the flow chart. You know, it's something that obviously is a hard check, but you know, once you have that hard check, once you have that that check swing, then from the flow chart, then you're able to pretty much uh, hit grand slam home runs based just trading on sentiment alone. Okay, so the next point is uh, perfect. According to Alice and McCallag, yes, in the long run, social sentiment is in fact a factor, but not in the short run. So they explain this beautifully in their research. And just going back to the caveat, we can say that on the second second bullet point here, their research shows, uh, supports this, that stock returns feed back into consumer sentiment. However, consum consumer sentiment doesn't necessarily feed back into stock returns, and if they do, it's just simply a, a coincidence. So to summarize, uh, the, the XY plot shows the five-day S-factor raw score uh, with a positive uh, slope, as you can see here with all the observations uh, within two-year time span. And it's able to predict the daily returns of the euro with the underlying euro ETF as a proxy for the euro. The option sentiment indicator measures top-line market sentiment, like I said, uh, not necessarily uh, conf investor confidence or, or single stock sentiment. It's it, and it and it really uh, it really hasn't made the leap into a theory building. Uh, it's really just simply noise trading, and so that means that uh, essentially you really should trade off your your confidence, I guess you could say, and um, and 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 to, and and. To, Bank on news trading, which is which produces permanent returns. So the noise trading indicator is able to cap capture intraday price moves, and explain some of the noise. Yes, um, in a linear model. However, you know it's 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 a noise trading indicator, and so that's how we approach it. Uh, and it's not a momentum indicator, so that means every day is a new day. So if there's a series of buy or sell signals, it's just simply a coincidence. It's not it shouldn't be seen as as any type of uh, uh, building of momentum or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the flow chart for the next couple minutes. So in conclusion, with the flow chart, uh, just just to recap, so with the with the check swing and being able to to confirm that the that the noise trading indicator is giving you and it's it's what it what it does essentially is it's if there's an uptick in the sentiment and you're making money off the noise trading indicator and you're able to differentiate the two so in theory what you're what you're doing is having your cake and eating it too so something has to give and most likely it's going to be your profits because you just notice that there is an uptick in the sentiment and you were able to differentiate by saying that you're no that because we're, we are pretty much a noise trading indicator with the option sentiment and you're confirming this with the uptick in the sentiment uh, itself either with the investor sentiment survey consumer sentiment index from University of, of Michigan or whatever proxy that you use to 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 to, uh, to, to measure sentiment like for instance the the uh, the raw the raw score if you have 
the privilege to to be following uh, based on the social market analytics data and you're seeing you're seeing an uptick in the raw score or whatever uh, proxy that you may be using something has to give so you'll see in the research um, how the relative performance of the indicators behave there's really very few times that there's a convergence in between the noise trading indicator and the social sentiment the proxy for the social sentiment indicator so that means that uh, unless you th unless you're able unless you're not able to differentiate unless you think that you you in fact have the greater position with the with the OSI and you in fact are not you know the noise then you know you pretty much are are slated to, to, to go down from there so that's the idea so the relative performance whenever there's a convergence in between the noise trading indicator and the social sentiment indicator the, then uh, in, invariably what happens is that they must uh, they must um, go separate ways so they kind of like it's almost like repelling each other because they simply couldn't it's it's not meant to be that they both converge so that's that's a beautiful thing about this uh, it's it is noise and it is and and within the uh, within the, um, the within the research it does it is categorized as idiosyncratic risk with the, as you can see this um, formula here where epsilon equals Q times M SMF which is social media factor plus pi uh, which which is essentially the um, all, all of that all of that noise and all of the returns comprised from the noise factor are, are, are pretty much encapsulated in this in this uh, formula and so uh, if you're able to confirm that it is coinciding with a an uptick in the sentiment then you should trade it off you should you know hold on to your profits and just stay flat with the, you know the next day and so that's why it's an intraday moving uh, intraday price indicator and um, so that's that's the confirmation so that's pretty much um, that's pretty much the theory going into practice and then as you can see also with uh, the, the uh, investor sentiment survey uh, that the reason why it is a contrarian indicator that no rational investor would pour their money into the stock market just because there's good feelings or, or, or good hope uh, in the stock market so that's the idea. That's the major idea that they're going to invest in it because it's a good value, a good return on investment. And so that's why the uh, five factor model plus SMF, that's why they pretty much uh, prove that you, you will get better returns by buying value stocks and, and such and stuff like that. So, so pretty much the value stocks will give you better returns on the long run. And so the rational investor will buy in va uh, value stocks. So that's that's the idea. Um, and so uh, that's pretty much uh, all I have to say. The uh, the uh, sentiment survey also can uh, go towards the notion that no sentiment factor in the short run, according to Alice and McCallig. Um, and so that means that you know you pretty much um, should capture those. Uh, Price movements and and uh, and pocket it, and not you know invest in that as a for the long run as a long term indicator. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I mean the, the here it goes from the idiosyncratic risk to social sentiment, and so like I said, if there is a if there is a confluence, uh, if there is a convergence, I guess you could say of the two sentiment indicators, then something has to give and so uh, most likely it's going to be your uh, your profits if you're trading on the noise trading indicator so that's the idea so that's that's why this research uh, will show uh, and illustrate this uh, flow chart in a way that uh, is profitable and beneficial to you and your clients so uh, to, to take a look at sentiment trading as an endogenous variable you're able to still make a lot of good money uh, just as you would uh, just by trading on exogenous factors like such as such tip-offs like for instance recently with the uh, OPEC uh, with the OPEC uh, cut of production so that's an exogenous variable or for instance uh, the uh, Brexit 
uh, results, the surprise results of the Brexit re referendum. So that was obviously a surprise and uh, produced a lot of um, a lot of market moving sentiment and also some real uh, some some real uh, change in, in the uh, in the global currency market for the, for the British pound sterling. So th th this is something that you don't even need to to really know the future. You don't need to know like what might be or or what uh, what is. You just simply need to know that you're trading based on a, a sentiment indicator. And if you could differentiate in between the sentiment and the news um, as information, so information given news, which is which produces permanent returns versus sentiment given news, which pr produces ephemeral returns or intraday price movements. And if you can understand the confluence in between the two with the noise trading indicator, and a proxy for social sentiment via, in this case, the five-day raw score, and you're really in the driver's seat. Now, now you're in the cockpit, you know, the jet, jet airplane, because you can make the same kind of, you know, obviously you can make singles and doubles like you breathe, but you can make the same kind of money as somebody trading off of the old uh, exogenous factors such as the, the major market moving news. So I'll, I'll just end with that. Um, if you didn't get a chance to to join the call at two o'clock, um, I will open it up as well for next week. And um, I hope to hear from you soon. Just feel free to go ahead and email me, give me a call, shout out with any type of uh, questions or feedback or suggestions, and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Have a great day.